but it was just crazy. It just kept soaking it in. I remember when I bought this land, we talked about our dream was to have a log house. Mm -hmm. And you stood there and you told me that I could do it. I remember that and I said, Nikki, I've never built a house in my life. And you just looked at me and said, you can do it. And all I did was I went through all of the specs by the city and I laid everything out, all of the details, and I figured everything else out. And I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this because if you put your mind to it, there's a whole heck of a lot in this world that you can figure out all on your own. You gotta believe in yourself just a little bit more. And I mean, when I say I built every square inch of this house, I mean everything from, I put the roof on, I framed it up, poured the concrete, did the detail work. I even hand built the, the railing. And today, you guys, we're gonna take on a new project that I've never done before. We're gonna finish this. All right, so, Frankie, how old is this thing, you think? I would say I was probably 12, 13 when I first seen it in his garage. I was probably 10, 10, 11 when I first seen it. Okay. So 50 years, 50 some years, as I know, but it was, it was, he used it then, so 10 who's, years prior. Who's he? Who's my he? Uncle. Your uncle. So this was in your uncle's garage. Yep. So this is maybe close to 70 years old, you think? It could be. I would say they lived there for quite a while. And I don't know. If, I don't know if he built it, but he because he, he did woodwork on the side. Well, he had to build it. Cause well, I mean, a, he could have got it prior to you know somebody. He could have been already. Yeah, but built. there's so many details, just like the coving inside of the the screws, because everything yep. is wood well, on even, this even thing. Even when they they. they like, Got uh, the block. Everything's threaded. Yeah, everything is threaded. I mean, even I mean that's a big thread. Where's that little thread? We pulled that one apart. Oh, it's on that handle, right there. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Somebody took the time to hand thread that thing. But, well, they didn't have no modern tools. That's why I'm thinking it's old. You know, we are not old, but I, so we're guessing that this could be over a hundred years old. I'm guessing because the lag bolts are just old square style flags. You know, they're all the square style. There's nothing new. If there is new, I put it in there to fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to stone coat the top of it and see what it looks like when we try to bring it back to life. So the whole thing's been hand sanded because it was full of grease and oil, but we're not taking out any of this on purpose. We want to leave some of that stuff in there just to see what it'll look like. And then what we did on the bottom, because we're going to pour a new one, new top on it. What we did on the bottom was sealed it up. So you see this gray stuff right here? So what we're going to do is it's upside down. That's so the, the, the goodness doesn't drip through. And this is a messy process. But we're going to finish this up and take these guys along for the ride. So step one is sand everything down. Step two is to make sure all of the sand, actually the sawdust I should say, is gone. Yes, it's early. And that's where a rag and water comes in. I'm gonna start wiping this one down. Yeah, yeah, that one should be all done. I just got to here. So once we get this wiped, just wipe it off. Then we, uh, then we can apply 
the material, but we gotta get 100% of that dust off because that won't let anything stick. So the materials we're using are stone coat part A and B. We mix these together. Clear color A resin, B hardener. We just follow the instructions. We've used another product called Famil Wood. Remember Famil Wood? Would you ever go back to using Famil Wood? I think this was a little easier, better. You like stone coat better? I think so. I like it way better. Yeah. There's no comparison. We've uh, never. We just started when we started doing this. We used that fan or whatever. When we had a catastrophic failure. Big time on the countertop. Yeah. yeah, we had it done. Final top coat, yeah. and the fricker just heated up <laughs> out of nowhere. Remember that? Yeah. All right, guys, here is the countertop where we had the catastrophic failure, and what had happened was the family wood started to boil up, so we got our three coats on and then we had to take everything all the way back down to raw wood and start all over again and that was a couple years ago and let's just take a look at how this famo wood is holding up today so this whole countertop is going to be all taken back down because this whole thing has released all of this has released all through here so the family wood i bought from the big box store i think it was menards and i would never use it again now we've used stone coat very similar situations i poured one two three countertops with stone coat i've poured a mantle two mantles and another third giant countertop a massive eight foot piece of black walnut with stone coat and i've never had a one single issue with stone coat it's so much easier to work with. It's so forgiving. Actually, and I poured two floors with stone coat too. I poured uh, a living room floor and a shower floor with stone coat. I poured a lot of stone coat, um, including what you're seeing today. And it's been by far the best product that we've used for uh, resin projects. Heated up. It was, it was Ca a mess. Catastrophic failure. We've never had a problem. We did it. What? We had to redo it. Yeah, we had to start all over again. We've never had a problem with stone coat yet. No, no. Knock on wood. Let's even just even doing you know keep it that quick way. ones at the bar at the cabin. Yeah, I mean we've never had a failure yet. The stuff is the best stuff yet. So anyway, we got some more prep work to do. Let's keep going. And just to be clear, guys, this is not a paid endorsement for Stone Coat. These guys from Stone Coat have zero clue that I'm doing this video and I bought and paid for all of the materials you see in this video. I just like this stuff that much. And if it made my life easier, hopefully it'll help you guys out as well. Frank, yeah. you have such a cute ringtone. <laughs> Is your butt playing music for you, Frankie? <laughs> yeah.
On this project, we ended up pouring two coats. The first coat covers everything and soaks into the wood, but that's the problem. It soaks all the way into the wood, so you may have a few little bare spots here and there that you need to address. With the second coat, that evens everything out. Now, what we opted to do is do the second coat as soon as the first coat started to get tacky. There's a very narrow window where it becomes a sweet spot to put that second coat on. If you wait too long, then you have to let the product fully cure. Then you have to do a light sanding so that it'll grip back onto that second coat, and then you can do the next coat. But you've got to take all the dust off. It ends up being a lot more work. So Frankie and I put this first coat on during the day, and then about 9, 10 o'clock that night, we started the second coat and got her all wrapped up. Now from our experience, it's a messy process. You really want to work that resin into the wood. You've got to dab it in, you've got to brush it in, you've got to work that in so it soaks all the way into that grain and gets as much of the material in it as possible so that when the second coat comes around, it just evens everything out. So this is still wet. But it actually will just get, I think, prettier as it dries. I think that's kind of what we're going to get. A little lift over as that wood soaks that in. Yeah, I think how all of those marks kind of got highlighted. All the rustic parts. It almost kind of stains this stuff kind of a little bit. It does. And that's a wood color out of it, yeah. Yeah, we did uh, barn timbers once with something different. Remember how dark them barn timbers turned out, Frankie? Yeah. Amazing. It looked like it was stained. Now, I couldn't believe it. I was like, Frank, are you sure you didn't stain this? And they're like, nope, just covered it. Well, that's just coming to life, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, even as... Even as just a little bit of time that's gone by, what, five, ten minutes? Yeah, that's probably, yeah. It's already, like, starting to pop. It's crazy. As the product starts to cure, it will bubble, and they will tell you that you have two options, a heat gun or a blowtorch. Don't bother with the heat gun. It does not do nearly as well as the blowtorch. If you've got a good blowtorch, use that, but make sure you hold the blowtorch far enough away from the surface that you don't burn it. You just want to pop them and release those bubbles. Torch is not working. Keeps going out on him. 
And Zach is hitting the top edge. It doesn't look like it may be in camera, but it's, the wood is soaking it in. Almost impossible to see, but when you look right there, that whole spot's just dry. Just sucks it right in. As you look over, you can just see little areas that the wood. Yeah, that's propane torch. What do you think's wrong with that thing? I don't know, we've had, that, we've had that issue with most of this with propane. I don't know, like, something with propane this year or what now, huh? Well, that won't stay running for nothing. And you know it's not got it. It can't be cold, it's hot in here. Hey. That's some fire heater. Boy, that, uh, hit a button and you're in business. <laughs> right, and that's a small model. Yeah. Jack, you got some in your pail yet? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah he's got some. My low? Well, yeah, I want a couple of spots here. I can add Get any of that in these grooves because then it will help you. So, that's why we're hanging it upside down. Now I know we've hit this at least twice, but that spot right there is that. <laughs> again and this whole front looks like it's just sucking it in oh you can just see it you can actually see the oh i know but i wonder if the sunlight's accelerating it oh maybe but it, we gotta we gotta hit the front again third time oh and this same spot in the top okay. exact same spot in this corner again Jeez. Well, and this one too. As I, as it's drying, you can see the divots are just drying up. Okay, we looked at it and Frankie and I decided it needs a second coat and right now it's tacky. And we can recoat re it right now while it's tacky or we could wait 24 hours, let it dry, then sand it down with 220 grit sandpaper then go over it make sure that all of the sawdust is off from it and then recoat it so we're gonna opt for right now even though it's pretty laid out we're gonna opt for right now to recoat it while it's tacky and see how the, mess is the second coat really does make everything pop just evens everything out and just brings it to life if you have the ability to do a second coat at the time and you're willing to put the extra effort into it, I would say it is worth doing a second coat. And when you do a second coat, just be prepared to use almost as much product on the second coat as you did on the first coat. It probably doesn't make sense, like, oh, you should use less because it's already soaked into the wood, but inevitably you end up spilling it, wasting it, and using just about the same amount. So just uh, plan on using about the same, time, same amount. How many times can I say use the same amount? Probably a couple more times I can say it, but I'm done. very real challenges. Uh, 
I need to I put heat and get them bubbles out of there. I mean, how yeah. sticky everything is. I think we got bubbles. Hmm. Are those are those already in there? Pretty good, but I think I can heat them up and they'll come out. And it's so sticky. It's a challenge. This is the top. You'll never see that. You'll never see that. Yeah. guys I got the table done well I didn't get it we all got it done together Frankie Zach and I and here she is in its final home But that's going to call it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed going along for the ride as we restored this 100 year old, completely wooden, I don't know, masterpiece. I don't know. I thought it was amazing personally. I mean, I love stuff like that and I love trying new things. So what new things have you guys tried? I'd love to hear your adventures, your stories. Have you tried something good, bad, or in between? I don't care if you succeeded and it was an amazing home run or if you tried something and it failed. That's life, man. The good with the bad brings us all together. And when we try to look perfect, it just is so fake. You know what? Just accept it, man. We all do good. We all have things that don't do so good. And it is what it is. So let me hear what things you guys are working on. But that's calling it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey today. God bless. And go get them. I like this thing.